Welcome to the OmniAccess Wireless AP1101 video training. At the end of the course, the participant will be able to identify the AP1101 components, install a wireless network based on the AP1101, describe and set up the available options for deployment of an AP1101, the benefits of this training, this training course addresses any person in charge of an installation of an AP-1101. There are no prerequisites. We will cover simple deployment to more advanced ones, including options. In this module, we will cover the presentation of the AP-1101 and how to connect it to your system. Traditional wireless solutions are not suited to SMB environments. They require a large investment in resources to be implemented and maintained. The cluster-based solution used by the AP1101 resolves these issues. You also keep the same levels of features compared to a controller-based AP. Unbox the access point. In the packing box you will also find an installation guide, two ceiling rail adapters, and the license agreement. Please select the topic you want to study by clicking the corresponding button. To begin the setup, you will need your Access Point 1101, an OmniSwitch 6350, and an Ethernet cable. Connect the Ethernet port of the Access Point to the port of your 6350 switch. The Access Point will be powered on by the OmniSwitch through PoE. Check the LED on the front of the Access Point. In this module, we will look at the first steps to set up the AP1101. The objective of this module is to provide information that is required to set up the ALE AP1101 and access the AP's management interface. Before installing the AP1101, make sure that you have the following. Ethernet cables of the required length to connect the AP to the Omni switch a power over Ethernet source such as the OmniSwitch 6350 or a PoE adapter, a DHCP server. Connect the access point to the power source. If you have followed the previous modules, the access point is already connected to a port of the OmniSwitch 6350. You can also use a PoE power adapter to power the access point. After the access point powers up, it will do a DHCP request. If the DHCP server times out or if there is no DHCP server in the network, the access point will be configured with a default IP address of 192.168.1.254. The DHCP client will still run on the access point so that when the DHCP server recovers, the AP can get a valid IP address.
Connect a PC or laptop to the access point network. In the Microsoft operating system, click the wireless connection icon in the system tray. The wireless network connection box appears. The name of the SSID generated by the access point will be My Wi-Fi plus the last four bytes of the MAC address. Click the My Wi-Fi network and click connect. In this module, we will cover the basic configuration of the AP1101. The objectives of this module is to provide information that is required to configure the AP1101 for the first time and generate the two SSIDs employee and guest. Open a web browser and enter the IP address of the AP, which is 192.168.1.254 by default, followed by the colon 8080. In the logon screen, select the administrator user and use admin for the password. Once logged on, you will see the setup wizard. Click on next. For better security, you can modify the administrator password. Change and confirm the new password. The access point supports different regulatory domains. Select your region. A new management network can be created. It will replace the My Wi-Fi network. Create the new network called Management and specify a passphrase of at least eight characters. This is the last step of the setup wizard. Then log in with your new password. The employee network is a basic Wi-Fi network. It will be used by employees in the organization. Passphrases or 802.1x based authentication methods are supported in this network type. Employee can access the protected data of an enterprise through the employee network after successful authentication. In the WLAN window, click on New. Click Advanced to configure the advanced parameters. Name the network Employee. Check that the network type is set to Employee. We will use the passphrase authentication method. Configure the passphrase to employee and confirm it. At the end of the setup, click Save. The guest wireless network is created for guests, visitors, contractors, and any non-employee users who will use the enterprise Wi-Fi network. Captive portal or passphrase-based authentication methods can be set for this wireless network. Typically, a guest network is unencrypted, but you can change it in the creation wizard. In the WLAN window, click New. Click Advanced to configure the advanced parameters. Name the network Guest. Select Captive Portal and check that the network type is set to Guest. At the end of the setup, click on Save. The Captive Portal must be activated on the access point. Scroll down, click Access and then click Captive Portal Switch. It will turn green. Click Authentication, then click Add. Add the user guest in the internal database of the AP. Select the group guest. Open your Wi-Fi connection manager and select the employee SSID. 
click on connect and enter employee for the passphrase. You are now connected to the requested network and you can start browsing. Open your Wi-Fi connection manager and select the guest SSID. Open your browser and type in any URL. You are forwarded to a captive portal asking you to accept the condition of use. Enter the logon and password guest you have created earlier on in the access point. You are now connected to the requested network and can start browsing. In this module, we will cover the advanced configuration of the AP1101. The objectives of this module is to provide information required for the advanced configuration of the AP1101. It will allow the administrator to customize and monitor the AP1101. To change the AP name, click AP in the AP tab. In the Detailed Information tab, click Edit, rename the AP, and click Save. To save the AP's IP address, edit the IP mode. By default, the AP gets its IP address from a DHCP server. For manual configuration, click the static and enter the new IP address, the net mask, and the default gateway. If you want to manage the AP, click the AP tab. Click the config link to review the configuration that will be pushed to the AP. Click the firm link to upgrade the firmware of the AP. You can select local firmware with image file or FTP the firmware with image file URL. Click the power icon to reboot the AP. Confirm the reboot by pressing OK. In a cluster, you can specify a single IP address to manage the multi-AP cluster. The AP is automatically provisioned on a shadow interface of the AP that takes the role of the primary virtual controller. To specify name and IP address for the virtual controller, click System and then the general link. Enter the name in the group name text box and the IP address in the group management IP text box. Use a relevant name for the location for better maintenance and give your cluster a unique ID with the group ID value. When using WPA or WPA2 Enterprise SSID, you need an external radio server that will authenticate the users. Click the New link in the WLAN tab and then Advanced for additional settings. Name your WLAN and select Enterprise in the Security Type option. This will allow WPA or WPA2 Enterprise SSID. Enter the IP address of the radio server and the secret key in the Auth Secret text box. Finalize the WLAN creation by clicking Save. 
the AP1101 supports Captive Portal authentication method for guest network access. Captive Portal authentication displays a web page requesting credentials from the guests who's trying to access the internet. First, confirm your guest WLAN is using the guest network type and that Captive Portal is enabled. Click WLAN and edit your guest WLAN to verify your settings. Next, globally enable Captive Portal on the AP. Click Access and turn on Captive Portal. Users can be created in the internal database. Click Authentication, add a user in the Account tab, give the new account and a password for a set role to guest. Alternately, you can use an access code for user authentication. You can also authenticate a user through its MAC address. If the MAC address of the user is contained in the MAC range you've defined, it will be authenticated. Preview and customize the captive portal by clicking Customize Captive Portal. When the user accesses the captive portal, he can use the username and password that was provided to him or the access code. A firewall is a system designed to prevent unauthorized internet users from accessing the private network connected to the internet. Firewalls define access rules and monitor all traffic entering or leaving the network, blocking traffic that does not satisfy the security policies. The firewall treats packets based on the first rule matched. To create a firewall policy, click Access and ACL. Add a new ACL and specify the source and destination. The type of traffic you want to match and select the reject or accept action. Finalize the ACL creation by clicking Save. RF management is a radio frequency management technology that optimizes WLAN performance, even in networks with high traffic, by dynamically and intelligently choosing the best Wi-Fi channel and transmitting power settings for each AP. To access RF management, open the wireless window and click RF. Select the AP you want to configure by clicking the Edit icon. ACS is Automatic Channel Selection and is activated by default. Disabling it will allow you to manually configure the channel of transmission. APC is Automatic Power Control and is enabled by default. Disabling it will allow you to manually configure the transmit power emissions of the AP. ACS and APC configuration is separate for the 2.4 gig and the 5 gigahertz radios. One of the most important security features is to detect rogue and interfering APs that can potentially disrupt network operations. In the Rogue AP window, you will find a list of all the rogue and interfering APs detected by your AP. The interfering APs could be legitimate APs in nearby homes or businesses. You can trust these APs so that the security features of your AP1101 will not disrupt a legitimate AP. You can then define a whitelist for all the legitimate APs.